everything starts with plants and optimal photosynthesis, but most plants are too sick to optimally turn sunlight into energy, so they are not able to create or regenerate soils. Join us for a fascinating deep dive into healthy plants and non-healthy plants. We talk about the balance between EH, electrons, and pH, protons, in soil, plants, microorganisms, animals, etc. Unbalanced EH, pH conditions lead to poor nutrition, poor photosynthesis, and as a consequence, plants lack the energy and are being oxidized. And guess what happens next? These plants are being attacked by pests and pathogens and need to spend a lot of energy on fighting off these pests and pathogens which means they don't have the energy to produce healthy food. In short, it's all about energy and the energy we either get from photosynthesis or from photosynthesis from a few million years ago, aka fossil fuels. What are the connections between healthy farming practices, healthy soil, healthy produce, healthy gut and healthy people? Welcome to a special series where we go deep into the relationship between regenerative agriculture practices that build soil health and the nutritional quality of the food we end up eating. We unpack the current state of science, the role of investments, businesses, nonprofits, entrepreneurs, and more. We're very happy with the support of the Grantham Foundation for the protection of the environment for this series. The Grantham Foundation is a private foundation with a mission to protect and conserve the natural environment. Find out more on granthamfoundation.org or in the links below. Welcome to another episode, today with an engineer in agronomy working on One Health, an approach based around the balance of electrons, EA, and pH, protons, in soil, plants, microorganisms, animals, etc. Welcome, Olivier. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Sorry. And first of all, shout out to, to Pierre Ville, who introduced us. Um, I have a lot of questions around this because, uh, as you know, I'm not a soil nor animal expert. And so we're gonna, I'm going to ask, I think very often, what does that mean in plain English? And can you explain <laughs> that again? Um, but you, you, I think, are used to, used to that. And you've been in this space for, for so long. So I, I always love to start, to start with... A personal question and a question, how did you end up focusing on soil and how did you end up focusing on agriculture as, as a career path? Because there are many other paths you could take as, a, as an engineer, uh, for sure. So what, what was it that triggered you into the, the fascination for food, ag and soil? Well, I don't know exactly. I always wanted to be to work on, you know, in agriculture. Um, I was lucky enough when I started my career to to have some bosses who told me that I was not allowed to specialize in anything. So um, that's a very nice way to to focus on what is the, the most important. I just try to be as efficient as possible to change the system and improve the, the, the way we, we grow things and the, the way we can keep our soil healthy. And, and do you remember when you noticed or or when it hit you when you discovered let's say that the current way of of farming is not doing that is doing the opposite again i was really lucky to to meet uh, lucien segui very early in my career so it is he's been working on, uh, on conservation agriculture he was one of the pioneers in conservation agriculture he was working in brazil but um, he came to visit us several times in Madagascar. I spent most of my life uh, in, in the tropical countries in Vietnam, in Madagascar. So Lucien was really a pioneer of uh, conservation agriculture and changing the system and, and showing how we, we need to, to regenerate the soil and how, how the plants are so important for the system to, to work properly. It's interesting you mentioned that the plants as a focus point, basically the plants are sort of the entry or the plants are the key tool. And I'm, say, I'm using tool here very um, deliberately, but of course it's not, it's not fair, but a key tool to build healthy soil. Yes, is that, yes, is that fair? yes. There's, there's, it's clearly something uh, we, we have to, to stress more often is that all the energy from the system comes from plants, from the photosynthesis. So, uh, you, so actually, you, it comes from the sun. It comes, like all yes, the energy it, comes from the sun, it comes and there from the, the sun. That, then, yeah. uh, yes, it comes from the sun. But the sun on a bare soil, it's really oxidizing. It's a loss of a lot of energy. 
Uh, on the contrary, the energy of the sun is the energy for photosynthesis if you have plants. So uh, the plants are the key to, to catch all the energy from the sun and to, to inject it in the, in the system. And then the plants will feed the microorganism will and we will, all this energy will be used to to fill in all the functions we need to have for soil to to work properly so especially on soil structure is fundamental is a key point and to uh, to keep to create and to keep a good soil structure you need plant roots you need uh, macrofauna earthworms so they eat plants remnants and you need microorganisms that are fed by the plants so um, all the energy from the system comes from the plants and that's really one one thing that strikes me in, uh, in the one health approach the one health approach was designed first by by uh, veterinarians and, and and doctors in medicines and and uh, the the soil and the plants are the the last piece in the puzzle they bring in. And for me, this is the opposite. It's it, The plants are where all the system relies on. It's, it's, it's without the plants. We, we, we often hear that you need healthy soil to have healthy plants. It's the opposite. You need plants to have healthy soil. And healthy plants, probably. And, and healthy not, not plants. Just any plants. And healthy yeah. plants. But um, first, you need to catch the energy to, to improve the soil structure. Then you can get healthy plants that will make healthy soils. But really, the, the first step is to have plants growing. Uh, you, you can grow plants without soil. You remove the plants from the soil, you get a dessert with the sand only in, in, a, in a few months or years, and it depends on the climate. And so it's really an energy question. And, yes. And I've, I've heard people say like farmers are basically solar and solar energy entrepreneurs, and they, they use very small solar panels, which are leaves, yeah. um, and, and need to capture as much as possible and as long as possible and as um, as layered as possible almost to not waste basically like a single ray of sunlight. Like you need to capture as much as possible. Uh, and that's why you, you sent an email before, like plants have to grow as much as possible, as long as possible and all over the year, which sort of goes against most of conventional agriculture <laughs> systems at the moment. But just to explain how much of a difference can that make um, in terms of if, if like if an experience that comes to mind or an example um, just to to paint the picture a bit clearer of how important plants are to to make the soil and how important to turn that like sort of the the, the key or the engine starts with plants um taking sunlight and, and the, turning it into sugars and exudates etc how it's uh, how can you get it? i'm not sure i understand your question in fact no in terms uh, of like you've worked in the tropics in madagascar yeah. and and like the difference between Taking the plants first compared to the conventional approach of okay, you need better soil to grow a plant at all. Like the 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 the, the main difference between temperate and tropical conditions is that in in, in in tropical conditions, if you don't work properly with nature, you can destroy the soil extremely fast. Within a few months, you you get all your soil lost and, and, and wasted. Uh, it's longer in, in, in temperate conditions. Uh, so that's a good thing. To we're finding in. out now, basically. It, yeah, yeah we're but out it's, now. The, it's <laughs> the same processes. That, that it's just that in tropical conditions, they are faster and quicker and stronger. So it's easier to study them. That's also one of the reasons why I like to work on the on, 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 on tropical conditions. But... Um, but at the end, it's always the same. If you remove the the energy from the system, nothing is working anymore. And and mainly the soil structure is fundamental. And to keep the soil structure, you need energy. You need to feed microbes. You need to feed the the earthworms, the termites, all the all the, the ecological engineers, what we call them. And um, if you stop feeding them. Then you don't have the, the the manpower to to sustain this structure, and you also need energy to make the glues that keep the the soil structure. Uh, all all these uh, fungi that that will produce different uh, kind of yes sugar, but also glues that will sustain the structure. We need a structure that will not collapse in water, and uh, and all this is energy. In fact, and and this is um, the, the 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 main difference we uh, 
can see with conventional system is that um, in agroecological system in, in, in regenerative agriculture, the principle is to have most of the energy of the system coming from direct photosynthesis from the plant. Uh, in, in conventional agriculture, we use fossil energy. But uh, yeah, which is very old solar energy. But yeah. this is <laughs> this is all again yeah. coming from the photosynthesis. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yes, true, one true. Or something like one hundred million years ago. So um, that's the main difference. And the the second main difference is that, um, as I said, soil structure is a key. And uh, with um, with a rotating tool, with iron uh, and, and fossil energy, you can recreate some macro porosity for, for a while, but it will not be stable. But you cannot create the, the micro porosity, the one, the, the small pores where you can keep water, where you will have your, your water reserve. So that's, uh, that's another major difference. We use fossil energy and we are not able to make the soil structure uh, sufficient to keep water when uh, when water is getting Which is hitting in, us hard now. Uh, it's, yeah. it's 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 a key. It's really a key. Also now we need to to store as much uh, rainwater as possible, and and uh, the, the best way to store it is to have a good soil structure with this micro pores that will store the water that will keep, retain the water, and this is made by by microorganism. It's very small pores, and, uh, and you cannot no make way. them artificially, physically, physically, mechanically, mechanically. No. Uh, and do you remember when, like, the One Health and and the concept of, like, basically, the One Health came on your path? Like, when when you started looking also at the the quality of the plants or the health of the plants, and then obviously how to translate at some point into into humans or whoever consumes those plants with bleu blanc coeur, obviously it's it's very often goes through an animal um uh, the animal protein side um, but when the the um, almost this quality or nutrient density or a health piece became part of your work was that from the beginning or was that also was that later on no at the beginning we, we quite rapidly understood that uh, with, with all my colleagues and uh, from from Surat working in the team we, we understood that the plants were the key and that uh, we needed to have as much as possible so we we designed cropping system in order to to enhance this and it's only later on when we started working on, uh, on the micronutrients needed for photosynthesis and uh, and all this and and when we I started to work on this uh, redox approach, which is basically based on on energy. Um, the, the redox is the the electron, so it's the energy kept in the electron. pH is in the proton. Basically, we I I, I see a, a plant like a, like a nitrogen plant. <laughs> It's uh, photosynthesis is is mainly uh, storing energy in the form of hydrogens. Okay, and uh, it's uh, hydrogen and oxygen. It's it's uh, all this pH EH uh, story with electron and proton. Uh, hydrogen is one electron and one proton. So mm -hmm. when we add proton or electrons to the system, we 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 store energy. And um, the plant is, is the, the, the vision we have from photosynthesis is we, we're always talking about carbon. We need to store carbon. Uh, CO2 has no energy. <laughs> so it's, so it's, not it's full of, uh, and, and, and diamond, diamond is pure carbon, but you, you don't grow anything on carbon or on, on charcoal. So um, the, the importance, the, the, the carbon, in fact, is, is the storage unit it's the it's the compartment of the battery and the but it's not the battery itself and it's not the energy but, no. but an empty battery is useless <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. so uh, you're saying let's focus on the energy focus that on stores the energy it. yeah fo focus on the, the the energy inside that is the, the carbon is just the chains of carbons are just the, uh, the compartment to store energy so we need to look at all the hydrogens that are stored uh, and also the um, the aromatic cycles because you have electrons also but mainly when you start looking hydrogen versus oxygen 
uh, you have a good idea of uh, the, the amount of energy you have in your in your system, and it's what you, we need to look at in the in humus, in uh, in, uh, in all the in all the functioning, in all the components, and uh, and at the end, it's uh, this energy that you will get back in the in your food. Okay. And is that bit like I remember from the first time we had Pierre on Pierre Ville of Bleu Blancur, he was saying the, the omega three six yes. ratio is a really good proxy of what happened in the the value chain or in the chain yeah. and, and if soy has been used or other things to to unbalance that. Are you saying that the EH pH balance or non balance unbalance is a really good proxy of, of everything else? Um that, that like if it's well well balanced, we can say that this is a, a well functioning and thus uh, well functioning mainly also on the photosynthesis piece because that's what we want we want an efficient plant that takes in a lot of this solar energy and not not take it in basically yeah is it a good proxy for health uh, yes but it's not always enough but it's it, of it, course it, more it, complicated it, yeah, yeah it's it, it, you need to look at why it happens because uh, you, you you in fact so how do you measure that or how do you look at it so we we, we it took quite a, a few times we took took us five years to be able to measure properly because the measurement in uh, with electrodes for in electrochemistry the 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 measurement are false by the electromagnetic fields so it's getting more and more complicated to measure but um we we are developing for the plants we are measuring now through uh, infrared spectrometer uh, so we need to, in field in field we are need to calibrate yeah. for, for for each plant it's what we are doing at the moment but the measurement is much faster and and uh, and more accurate. Because I can imagine when you take a leaf and send it to no, a lab, no, that's no the one. energy is gone. Yes, like it's yeah, not that it's it's, not, it's, it's uh, irrelevant. Yeah, no, yeah, it yeah. has to be on plant yeah, at that moment. Yeah. No, we need to do it at a certain time in the day because uh, during the night there was no photosynthesis. So the in the morning the the EH is dropping fast because the the plant is getting energy from the sun. And so, um, but uh, the the main problem is to measure at the right. Stage. For, for for the different processes because all this is compartmented in the plant for instance it's not the same level in the roots or in the leaves it's not the same level in the the apoplast so, the and, and yeah. outside the cell inside the cell and the, in the mitochondria or in the chloroplast or in the so it's it's uh, it's compartmentalized so that's the, that's a difficulty but but uh, in, in plant physiology there's a lot of publication on this so it's uh, it's not so difficult to have good uh, information and and as agronomists <laughs> just measuring the average level of the of a leaf uh, if you take the always the same type of leaf because also young leaves are more oxidized than uh, than fully photosynthetic active plants uh, leaves so so um, but once you understood this it's rather easy to have uh, the measurement now especially with the spectrometer uh, we were able to, to get gathering quite a lot of information at the moment especially for plants like uh, grape wine or or wheat so so. And then what does it tell you, or what does it tell you as an agronomist and, and also indirectly or directly the farmer? Like, let's say it's an unbalanced, um, or no, let's start with the balance. Like it's a balanced um, reading you get and, and you compare it and like, this, this looks good. Like, is there, does it mean the farmer doesn't have to act and doesn't have to do anything? Or what, what does it tell the, the economic practice, basically? So the, the it will tell you if the plant has enough energy and if it can control the pH correctly because controlling pH is very important and it, it costs energy. <laughs> you need to activate pumps that uh, that uh, consume ATP. So you are you need energy to, to to regulate almost everything to absorb the nutrient. The the solubility of the nutrients relies on EH and pH. For, for most of them, as well. yeah. the the form of uh, nitrogen, uh, mineral nitrogen, is based on EH and pH diagrams, and, and and it impacts all the plant nutrition for many many aspects, and all the plant physiology. Uh, uh, absorption of nitrate is uh, will oxidize a lot the plant and alkalinize a lot the plant. Uh, absorption of ammonium will acidify a lot the plant, and and the different 
type of pathogens and insects and pests, they feed on plants that are too oxidized and according to different pH. Each type of pathogen or, or pest uh, can develop or can feed on on different parts of the of the plant. And when they are at uh, at EH and pH level, that that should suit them. <laughs> So, uh, so basically, a plant will get attacked if parts of the plant are not in balance in terms of yes, pH they, and pH. Yes, they are in balance and they are oxidized. In fact, they lack energy, and they lack energy because photosynthesis was not sufficient for. And an average wheat field, if you walk into it, how bad is it? Like a conventional, like let's let's not talk, uh, but like uh, if like how unbalanced or how like just comparing it to like really well let's say soil focused farmers like what's the difference is it night and day are we talking in terms of like just to understand for people that don't do this very regularly and and see it in a lab or in the field like how different like are they really sick plants compared to the other one or is the difference not so much so we're talking of a few tens of millivolts we measure eh is a measure of a tension of a voltage so we measure millivolts and um, we can see difference between uh, resistant or tolerant plants and and, uh, susceptible plants it's around 20 millivolts so it's small differences we need Mm -hmm. to measure and there's a high variability and what what is key what is fundamental to understand is that when you have a compacted soil with a poor soil structure as soon as it rains it's waterlogged the water asphyxiates everything so the plants will get the root the roots will not breathe there will be no oxygen for the roots so the photosynthesis will go down so the the plant is under asphyxia and the photosynthesis goes down so the 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 leaf, the, the aerial parts will oxidize because photosynthesis is not efficient. Um, and as soon as this soil is dry, it, they get really oxidized and then it's the, the opposite. <laughs> so for the plant, yeah. it's almost impossible to, 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 to keep a balance because it goes from asphyxia to over oxidation within two days. So that's, that's the, the real problem with with compacted soil and then all the plant nutrition is deficient and all, all the, the nutrients will not be absorbed or not in the proper form and they will get attacked by pathogens and, then they will and be insects attacked. and pests yes. and then they have to fight so they have to you to spend energy uh, it's a, it's a vicious circle when the photosynthesis is not enough uh, is is not functioning enough the plant will spend a lot of energy just for for nutrient absorption if the soil is oxidized the plant needs to spend energy to reduce around the the roots in the rhizosphere to reduce and acidify to get iron to get manganese which are essential elements for the photosynthesis so the the plant has not enough energy and it needs to spend a lot of energy to access to the nutrients <laughs> and uh, it will absorb nitrates when it's oxidized so it creates an imbalance on ph ph will get alkalinized a lot so the plant needs to regulate this and spend energy to do this so it has no energy to produce more leaves so no energy to catch the, the 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 sunlight to make photosynthesis <laughs> so so uh, it's it's a vicious it's a spiral yeah, down it's basically a, yes yeah. it's a, and you go down yeah. and down and then there's the plant produce little amount of uh, of biomass so there's little energy for the soil to to keep the soil structure to feed the microorganism to feed the, the, the all the macrofauna so you the structure gets down spiraling down and down once you have enough energy in the plant the photosynthesis you, you manage to produce enough then you you start a uh, upward spiral it's uh, it will improve and improve and the soil will be more and more balanced so the plant will not need to spend energy to get access to the nutrients so it will can there will be high photosynthesis a lot of biomass production and then you improve the soil structure and uh, and you go on like this so so it's um, there's really threshold levels uh, when the soil has not enough energy anymore the plants needs to, to to bring in the energy in the system so all the energy that she spent for this, you will not have it to make new leaves. 
So, and that means less energy into the system because, as we learned, all the energy comes from yeah. the leaves and comes from photosynthesis. And what does it mean for the quality? I mean, you mentioned wheat and grapes. Like in the end, like have you the step to the quality and the quantity of, of the harvest? Um, I can only imagine it's it's not good. But like, as as a, do you have any? anecdotal or, or in general experience there, what it means for what you end up harvesting. I can imagine a stressed plant is, is not going to yield what you want it to yield, both in quantity and quality, but what, what have you seen there? So the, the, um, it's, it's again a matter of energy. When the plant has enough energy, uh, it can store it, making lipids, making uh, secondary metabolites, making a lot of antioxidants, oxy a lot of uh, anthocyanin, of uh, flavonoid, all these energy-rich elements. When so, it has time, basically, when it's relaxed, when it, yeah, it's not when stressed I, it, for it, survival. It, it has yeah. enough energy to, to spend, to, to, to store it, uh, and then... Uh, it, this energy is available when the plants would need it when you have a, a week with a cloudy sky where the photosynthesis will go down then the plant we can has enough reserve to to, to, to to continue feeding the the, the microorganism in the soil that are needed for for nutrient absorption for water prospection for for many things so um all, all the all the stress in the plants or in, in the living organism are oxidizing stress. So uh, the plant will need to spend energy to face the stress. It can be a drought, it can be a nutrient deficiency, it can be uh, an attack by a pest. All this is oxidizing, so it's a loss of energy. So if the plant has enough energy uh, it can it can face this without uh, without any any problem when it starts lacking energy there's it will spend um, uh, there, there's two two stages in fact a plant will produce a lot of um, antioxidants either when it has a lot of energy and, and then it can store it to, or when it's under stress or, or yeah. when it's under stress because because i've heard those stories it, yes, i never remember it, it, where it, it, but like it's good to stress them sometimes because then you get that yes like, it's good to stress i never them. really understood that it's yeah. the, the the plant all the stress are oxidizing so the defense is antioxidants so if you have um a, Ah, if if you stress yeah, the yeah. plant, it will be obliged to spend the, the little energy it has to produce antioxidant. Otherwise, it will just the cell will just be destroyed. And when it's too oxidized, the cell it's a cell death. So, um, so uh, you wanted an anecdote. It's John Kemp who says. Uh, Ask the, um, the the how do you call this the, the cannabis producer if they stress their plants to have a lot of uh, THC. <laughs> no, they they put them in perfect condition so that they can they have a lot of energy and they can store a lot of uh, of this mid secondary metabolites. Um, so, so yeah, you have two two different ways and. Um, the, but the, the safer way, let's say, is yes, to not the, is to the, 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 create the abundance. In, yeah. in, the, in fact, the, the, when a plant is has not enough energy, it will get attacked by uh, by different um, fungi, uh, different bacteria, different. It, it depends on the pH and on the location. But uh, the oxidation of the plant, the lack of energy of the plant, will uh, allow the, the the pest or the pathogen to develop or to attack. Okay, or to digest when they are eating it. Um, so in, in such condition, the way for the plant to defend itself is also to kill locally by over-oxidation. It sends H2O2 around the fungi, it's this green and not green, sorry, black or brown uh, round around the, around the fungi on a, on, a, on a leaf, for instance. So the... The plant has not enough energy to defend itself through reduction, through antioxidants, so it kills locally through overoxidation. Okay, so that's that's um, 
that's the the only way for her. There's not enough energy to to be not digestible by the pest or pathogen, so it gets really oxidized, just like making a backfire or a counterfire to stop the fire. <laughs> so you destroy, you sacrifice some cells, but you 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 can um, avoid the, the contamination of all the plants. And so the the locally it kills through over oxidation and then systemically it sends a signal to the rest of the plant saying we are too oxidized so and we are attacked so now we we grow less and we keep more energy okay so to protect so basically the, triggers yeah the, yeah, it triggers the, which of course so, not something you want as a grower yeah. it's not something you want. but then um if we move back to this one health approach continually. Um, the, 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 the way conventional system works is it's globally it's oxidizing practices. <laughs> so the plant get oxidized, so, uh, so you have to protect <laughs> and you help the plant to kill the DNA through over oxidation. Basically it's the main, the main way for the, for the plant protection in conventional system. Uh, some some are different, but most of them are, are like this. Um, Meaning the the agrochemicals you the use, agrochemicals spray, you use yeah. the, the most of the fertilizer you use are oxidizing. The, the, the tilling the soil is oxidizing, and not having plants all the time is oxidizing <laughs> because you don't get yeah, the yeah. energy. So, so that's that's the the main strategy is to help the plant kills. Uh, it's in me through over oxidation, but then the photosynthesis is producing uh, antioxidants. So, so you go back to an area where the, the the different pathogen and pests can thrive again. So you again you over oxidize, but at the end you get a product that is oxidized that has low energy level. <laughs> so um, when you think that. When you realize that um, a digestive uh, tube or, or, or stomach is just like a root that has been uh, invaginated, <laughs> it's the same. It's the same structure. It's the same function. In in our belly, the, the animals in their stomach, we 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 grow some microorganism that will digest mm -hmm. the food we ingest. The plant does the same. The plants. Grows, but it's just yeah, grows, it says grows. not internally; it's it, inside out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, in topology, our digestive tube is the external uh, environment. Mm -hmm. It's outside. Yeah, yeah. It's it's open. Uh, it's an open air. No. <laughs> so, so, so. And so, what does that like mean? That that means that the food we absorb is like is the equivalent for the plant of the soil so when the plant is can we is, access it when, can we ox yeah. so if uh, if we feed ourselves or the animals with oxy with two oxidized uh, plants we are get we we don't get enough energy and then we need to spend energy to to stabilize to regulate the ph and and, and all these things and and this you can measure it in the the rumen of course for instance you have uh, some some document on this um to regulate the ph you 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 use energy you use ph proton uh, proton uh, atp pumps that consume energy so you you're getting more and more oxidized so when you change the diet from a uh, cow from uh, diet rich in uh, in uh, okay, let's say from 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 green grass to 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 silage maize to corn silage mm -hmm. um you you see an, an acidification you say you says the the, the vash is getting acidosis but the ph is stabilizing at at one level it drops but then stabilize and if you don't look at the eh the, the redox potential you don't see that the, the cow is 
oxidizing it yourself. It's up for ah, so basically you're saying you miss it because it, it drops, but it then stays stable. Yes, even though the cow is working really hard and spending a lot of energy. Yes, on... because there, there's a physiological level under which the the the, the pH that the, 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 the doesn't go. It, it cannot go below this, otherwise nothing will work. The enzyme will not work anymore. So the the the, the animals need to sustain this pH level. It's uh, the minimum level at which it can yeah. work, and then uh, for this, it spends more and more and more energy. And, uh, and when all the energy is exhausted, then <laughs> then it gets sick and and, and uh, with a lot of disease. So, and we can find this in uh, also for for humans. Uh, so uh, this uh, this uh, do you have some review paper on COVID nineteen? showing that it's purely a redox disease, strongly redox, not purely, but strongly a redox disease where the, the, the virus just exhausts your antioxidant uh, reserve. Uh, if you have enough, then you can fight. It's okay. You don't feel it. If you don't have enough, it gets exhausted. And then the reaction is to try to kill the virus through over oxidation. It's this, uh, this uh, cytokine in the storm that, uh, the, that drives you to the hospital. And then the, the long COVID is when you don't recover your antioxidant defense. So it's, all this is very well described in this review paper. And um, so that, that's the interesting part also in, in looking at this uh, very bioenergetics approach through redox and, and, and pH, because you can understand how it works in the soil, how the soil structure is fundamental to keep this balance. How it impacts the plant nutrition, how it impacts the plant disease. It doesn't disease, mean that, that how it impacts like our the, gut, the, 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 the gut structure is fundamental. If we take the soil microbiome and the gut microbiome, like yes, does it's, that it's, it's, equals it, like it works the amazing. same way. It's the same structure. It's the same functions. It's uh, it's just not the same microorganism. It's not okay, the same uh, yeah. level of functioning. The the plants are more reduced than the animals. So all the energy comes from the plants. So if, uh, if the reduce, uh, reduction is the, the accumulation of energy, so of, of this hydrogen especially. So um, there's, it's very specific, each organism and each part of an organism in fact, has a, has a specific EH, pH level at which it, it works well. Okay. And we need to sustain this. And you have locally this, but you also have a lot of redox and pH signal uh, in systemic ways and, and uh, a lot of information to transfer through this. So it's um, measuring it, it's a good proxy, but you need to understand the, the, the detailed functioning behind this. But all, all the the way how it works, all the physiological changes it, it creates in the plant, all these are very well described in, a, in, in many, many, many publications. So we just gather different things that uh, have been measured since. Well, redox in physiology, it's the last 20 years only. It's rather recent. pH is uh, <laughs> very old. And the, the two works together. You cannot look at one without looking at the other one. Otherwise, you cannot understand well, really. That's the, the thing we need to understand. Oxidation in biology is different than for the, for the electrochemistry. <laughs> Uh, oxidation in biology is the gain of oxygen or the, the loss of hydrogen. Okay. Uh, in, in electrochemistry, it's, it, oxidation is the loss of, of electron only. So what counts in biology, it's electron and protons, not only electrons. But that's, um, that's why seeing the plants as a nitrogen plant is very important. We, the, the photosynthesis, it's this. We... With the plant split water in H plus, so proton, electrons, and oxygen. Then it vents the oxygen out, and then it keeps the proton and the electrons, and it's the energy. It's and one proton plus basically one. Basically, the hydrogen it's, hydrogen economy is already there. It's yes, basically in agriculture. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. The 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 only green hydrogen is the is the plant. <laughs> It's literally green in many cases. Yeah. And, and what does this mean? I mean, a lot of this knowledge has been here for a long time. 
Some of it is relatively recent, but of course, 20 years is also not super recent. Like, do you see now with this attention, or at least we see, or I see more and more attention for this connection between healthy soil, healthy plants, or healthy plants and healthy soil, maybe the order should be different. Mm -hmm. Let's say healthy plants, healthy soil, healthy produce, healthy gut, and healthy people. Like, have you seen something shift in terms of attention over the last years as you've been, you've been following this for, for a while? Like, is there some more, finally some more attention growing or is it still very nascent and, and extremely small? It's, it's, it remains rather small. I, I must say that I have a very biased perception of the agriculture and uh, especially in France, uh, I'm back to France uh, since uh, oh yeah, five years ago only. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of training on this aspect to farmers. But the farmers coming to these trainings, they are farmers that have moved on a lot. Uh, they, it's not the usual farmers. So so yeah. I only see very interesting farmers. You see your bubble. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's why uh, it, it's still very... Uh, but has the interest for the training at yeah, least grown? Like uh, yes, are there yes, more and more yes, people yes, showing yes, up on yes, the door? Yes, because yes, that, yes. that's the sign. Yes. And the now the important thing now is to... to to transform the the try is that, that we we have a very detailed theory now it's it's very strong robust on this now we need to to design to 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 get sufficient information to make it very practical for a farmer to use a spectrometer yeah, what do you tell a to farmer? measure measuring and saying okay i'm balanced it's okay it has been cloudy but no no problem my soil is working well the plant is okay or the opposite oh it's really unbalanced now i have to help the plant uh to to get reduced and it's it's where we will we are shifting to produce that instead of oxidizing the plant and helping to to, to kill the 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 enemies will help the plant to gain energy and and then uh, remain protected against the, the the attacks in fact so that's the um, that's really what we need to do now is to to describe properly at which level we we risk this kind of uh, of pathogen or I'm working on data on, 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 on the mildew for, for on grape wine. That's a very, very huge problem. It's very, very sensitive at the moment. So there's less and less chemicals to that are allowed. There's a huge pressure on, uh, pressure on, 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 from the, this, wine uh, on, on the wine industry. So, um, so how do you approach that then? Like what is it there also with, with wine grapes? A lack of energy and a lack of pro yeah. lack photosynthesis to be able to defend. So we 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 work a lot on the cover crops, showing the importance of the cover crops, and also, um, in fact, the, the strategy will always you always need to regenerate your soil. If there's not a good soil structure, the plant will be permanently moving from. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's 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 changing too fast. You cannot control with spraying anything. It's a uh, it's, it's very difficult. So you need to the, the strategy is to regenerate your soil, especially the soil structures. For so for this you need organic matter. That means carbon with energy, <laughs> not not carbon that has been. That's what we learned today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, so it's it's through uh, organic matter and, uh, and all the things and and increasing the, the the biomass production, the photosynthesis. So so you need. To increase the the area of, of uh, the surface of photosynthesis, so you need to have Which more plants, more leaves, so, more yeah. leaves, so yeah. cover crops, and uh, and using the winter period and all the periods where there's, especially in, in grape wine, all during all the winter period, uh, the, the autumn and the winter, you absolutely need to have a, a cover crop at that moment. You are using because egg. all the grape wines don't have any, they don't have no, any leaves, yeah, and, so, and, so and so there's no activity. There's, there's no, no cover activity. Crop. There's no competition. Wow. There's no and there, there's no risk of competition, especially for water. On the opposite, in autumn you have too much water, so uh, using this water to grow crop to, to grow cover crop is uh, really important. So we are working on all this aspect, but also. Improve, uh, improving the photosynthesis. There's a lot of um, um, manganese and iron will get not soluble as soon as the soil gets oxidized. So the, most of the growing period in, uh, in the south of France, for instance, the soil are too oxidized because they are dry. And, and uh, so the, there's deficiency in manganese and, and, uh, and iron. And these two elements are fundamental for photosynthesis. 
So uh, the only way in that case is to, to spray foliar fertilizer in a reduced form because iron and manganese, they can be absorbed only in, in their reduced form. So if you apply them on the, on the soil, which is oxidized, they will get oxidized and the plant will need to spend energy to reduce it, to, 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 to get them. So that's, uh, that's uh, one of the ways to, in, to increase the, the, the surface of photosynthesis all year long as much as possible and to make photosynthesis more efficient through, uh, through foliar fertilization and, uh, and then help the plant to get more energy through different um, products that are reduced and acidic, so rich in energy, all the different maceration, uh, all the micro micro uh, micro the efficient microorganism and all these things that are that. So we we need to to use different levers. The, the more the soil is is degraded, the more we need to use different levels to bring back energy as fast as possible in the system to pass some threshold level uh, so that all the system will start functioning well. Or, or otherwise, you you do just slow down the degradation of your soil, but you don't uh, really regenerate it. So that's um, that, there's a huge demand for for that at the moment, and in fact, the, 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 um, we need to 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 get knowledge on what are the exact level EH pH of a grape wine leaves, where you can feel that there will be no problem for for your plant, or where you will get. Mildew or virus yeah, or different yeah, yeah. things. So um, this is something that is used in uh, in fish farming already. They know perfectly. They, oh, wow. There's some software. They know perfectly at which level in the water they measure in the water, which level you risk virus, where you risk different different pathogen, different yeah, yeah, parasites. Yeah, yeah. So they they have all this knowledge through a lot of measurements in the past decade. So. Uh, that's what we need to do now with the plants to get more knowledge. And it's what the measurement with the spectrometer are starting to, to help a lot because do, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's too long. In electrochemical measurements, no, no farmer can will ever, do will, that, will no. ever do that. Even for research, it has been a long, long <laughs> moment of, of, measure, of measuring. So, um, that's uh, that should game changer to be able to measure in the, directly in the field. In, in life. actually, it's a perfect bridge to to a question I always like to ask: if, if you had a magic wand and could change one thing overnight, could be anything in the food and agriculture space. So it could be very broad, could be very specific, like I need this tech technology to be anywhere, etc. But could be also consciousness, could be taste, could be carbon, could be anything you um, probably not carbon, but. What would you do if you had a magic power to change one thing only overnight? Uh, it would be to get uh, the way to measure more than pH and redox, but also the micronutrients and uh, the nitrogen forms in the plants. So that that would be a, a way to do a, a complete uh, diagnosis of the, the plant health with through maybe through infrared spectrometer. Or, we, we will be able to do this, but it will take a, a lot of time. But if we had the ability to to measure very rapidly, not only EH, pH, and electrical conductivity, which is a third parameter, which is important, but uh, but also, in fact, EH, pH will give you the the, the temperature and the blood pressure, <laughs> and. Then, if it's okay, you think it's okay. It's not. Uh, it will find me. It's if it's not okay, you need to analyze more into detail what you have. So it would be a blood analysis, the equivalent of blood analysis. So if we could do the, sap analysis, is something that uh, is developing and is really interesting. But there's still a delay between sending your your leave, getting the result. So if I have a if I had a magic wand, I would. Uh, Produce a tools that will be able to tell you EH, pH, electrical conductivity, but also all the the, the micronutrients and uh, nitrogen forms and, and and all these things. That would be really really um, a way to move forward fast and, uh, for farmers. And 
unfortunately, you, you no longer have this magic power, but you do have uh, an investment fund. So you are uh, not only training farmers and of course working, but you actually are suddenly overnight responsible for uh, putting quite a significant amount of money to work. So I usually use the example of, let's say, a billion euros. Um, I don't need to know exact euro amounts, or, <laughs> yeah. but I would love, I always like to ask it because I like to know what people would focus on. What would be the, the few places they say I would absolutely invest in this, I would absolutely not invest in this, and I would absolutely invest in, in that. What would you focus on if you had that amount? First, uh, training, a lot of training, <laughs> and to do the training to have enough information. So it would be a research program that are designed. Uh, the, the, one, one of the problem we have is that we, we don't um, adjust the, the recommendation to farmer to the, to the actual degradation or regeneration level of the field. In fact, most of the, the recommendation of all, most of the people who are selling product or most of the training, they say you have to do this or that. But um, it, it's uh, it, the transition to, to regenerative agriculture is is not linear. It is slow. It slows at the. It is really slow at the beginning. What your soil is really degraded, and then you upgrade fast, and then you reach a, a maximum, so plateau. a plateau. Yeah. So you will not go. So it's kind of sigmoid. And um, when you are on very very degraded soil, uh, the strategy will make plant growth and cover crop growth and all the things. But uh, if you just say we need to stop uh, the fertilizer, we need to stop plowing, uh, soil tillage and all this thing. Um, when you are on very degraded soil, if you don't plow, if you don't bring fertilizer, if you don't use chemicals, you, the, your plant will not grow. Okay, And uh, plowing on a very degraded soil will not damage it a lot. It will allow the, the the grain of your cover crop to grow <laughs> uh, but if you if you say well no we should stop plowing now everywhere then all this very degraded soil we will never be able to start your cover crops and your, your so you're saying of don't energy. be dogmatic yeah. yes don't, don't be dogmatic, be dogmatic and, and, and it's the opposite when, when, when so Plowing when you are on very, very degraded soil is needed and fertilizer and many levels will be needed. When you are on very... On, All on to the, get plants going, yes, basically. Yes, when you are, as long as you get plants going, yes, everything is allowed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, in the, with the strategy to stop this, because once you start regenerating your soil, plowing... A, a, a living soil is really destroying. <laughs> uh, applying excess fertilizer is really destroying. Pesticides are destroying. So um, you need really to adjust the recommendation and the practice to the level of degradation or regeneration where you are. And and uh, this is not enough taken into consideration because also we lack information on, on this. So um, it's easier to say one recommendation for all. <laughs> it's, it's what works best on average, uh, but uh, it's uh, something that is needed in some condition is dangerous, is uh, harmful in, uh, in other condition. And uh, so you, you really have to adjust on this and we need to develop more more knowledge on this, more consciousness on this, that uh, you really need to understand how it works and to adapt the practice and the strategy. The strategy is always the same. You need to regenerate your soul. But, and so for this, you will need to have more and more, as much crops, as much leaves, as much photosynthesis as possible. But the, the, the tactic depends on where you are on this, this trajectory of, uh, of, of restoration or degradation. It's not the same at all. You cannot plant on, on completely compacted soil. You can, you need to feed the, the plants when there's no elements in the soil. Or the, you need to spray foliar fertilizer. You need to adjust your fertilizer. So all this really would require a lot of uh, research work, but on a very nice way. Um, we, we could design a worldwide uh, uh, research program taking this very well structure around this. And, uh, and that would be 
the other the other part of this research program would be to have um, uh, experiments how to use the best the organic matter that we have. Okay, uh, for me we need. What do you mean by that? Um, conservation agriculture with poor biomass production it's it's does not work okay because you don't you don't regenerate enough the soil uh, so spread, spreading all the, your biomass all over the, the area homogeneously is not it's working well when you know enough and that you have passed the the threshold or uh, uh, above which so you're saying at the working. beginning when it's still at, degraded it's better to concentrate yes you need to concentrate the biomass so that locally you will make the system work better than produce a lot more biomass the and, and then you can yeah and this 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 is really really important to me uh, and have you looked into systems like especially when you've worked a lot in the tropics like the i always call them sort of the extreme um, agroforestry systems the syntropic side like really really intensive systems on the agroforestry side um a lot of leaves so a lot yeah. of photosynthesis a lot of biomass yeah. um what what do you see there what have you see have you seen there in in of course we haven't seen a lot of it in europe but people are bringing it here different layers of course different places in time but really focused on getting the engine going and really concentrating it on the syntropy not the entropy yeah so so the, the, there's always be will be a limit for the, with the temperature the the, the sunlight and the and, water. and the water, <laughs> but uh, for water we can improve a lot. The the the, the water storage with through through soil regeneration that that's something we can improve a lot. And and through uh, vegetation we the the the, the plants uh, makes the rain also. <laughs> It's through evaporation is a very. That's another series. We're doing uh, yeah. a water cycle <laughs> okay. series, but it's exactly that's a very good message. Yeah, yeah. let's the, repeat the, it. It's well. it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's very important to understand this is that m most of the rain comes from the evapotranspiration from the plants. So when we stop having plants, we stop evaporation, and then we don't have enough uh, humidity in the in the air, so we don't create droplets, and uh, so that's that's the important part also. But that's why we also need to to concentrate, to focus, uh, to focus. And it's it's why what the in in Burkina uh, the extreme condition you was uh, talking about the the good extreme condition with agroforestry and a lot of system and uh, a lot of rain and everything. But the other side of the extreme is the on extremely dry and degraded condition and degraded soil. The in Burkina Faso they they have a system called the Zai system and it's just a way to concentrate on one square meter they, they harvest all the rain to move through through a kind of um, half moon bringing all the rain on one spot uh, it's uh, it just locally there they gather all the rain they make they use all the biomass they have all the organic matter they have and they just plant one plant of maize one plant of bean per square meter but locally there they have increased and they have um, uh, past this threshold where the, where it can grow. So if you if you spray all the the little amount of rain on all the, all the square meter, you don't have enough water for the plant to grow. If you don't if you uh, don't concentrate the biomass, you don't have the 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 the, the, the soil improvement you need. So uh, for me, the, the the question is: okay, let's say you have. 10 tons of biomass uh, avoidable per hectare. What is the best use? Uh, is it to, to, to put it on half of the area so that you have 20 tons and you pass the threshold? Is it 40 tons? How, how much do you need to do, to do? But then you concentrate and then you pass, locally you pass the threshold. You can produce much more. And then you can spread the, the expand, the expand, from, expand there. from there, and that's that's a key, and it would be the same for water. And uh, that, for me, that's really really important to show this very clearly that it's not linear, uh, and and it's uh, sigmoids, and you have thresholds, and if you don't pass this threshold, uh, you you just slow down the degradation. 
So above this threshold, it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that's above the threshold. Yeah. A lot is possible. Yes, yeah. yes, it's uh, it's amazing. Above the threshold, everything gets much easier and, and it grows faster. And, and you, it's really amazing uh, how fast the regeneration can be. And as a as a final question, which usually leads to others, but. Let's say we're doing this in front of a, so you're no longer responsible for, for the investment fund, but we're doing this in front of an audience. You might've done that as well. I mean, you mostly, uh, of course, train, train farmers and people in the agriculture space, but let's say we talk to investors and people in the finance space could be pension funds, banks, people investing their own money, etc. Um, and we're doing this in a live audience. Uh, we're doing this in front of a live audience in a theater. What would be your main message that you want them? Of course, there's going to be a lot of information on stage. What's your main message you want them to remember when they walk away from that room? What would be your 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 message? Okay, if there's one thing you remember from this evening, yeah. it's this. <laughs> that all the energy comes from the photosynthesis. So we have to do everything possible to to, to, to increase the photosynthesis. Uh, globally, it's, it, it, this works at almost all scales. It's, it's valid for the planet. That's what is, is scaring with all these fires. and uh, But... but um, all the energy comes from the photosynthesis. We, the, the system lacking energy gets sick, all the system, it gets sick. Uh, it it starts with the plants and then the animals and then the, the human. So we, we need to regenerate the soil. And for this, we need the plants. Um, and we should not oppose the, the, the quantity, or the, the productivity with the quality. Okay, when 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 you are in conventional system where the the productivity is four through, um, it's like an electrical system. Uh, the 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 voltage is going down, so you load down the the resistance so that you can produce a lot. But then you empty your battery faster. It's what happened for with our system. So if you force the productivity by uh, with the, the conventional system, then the quality will not follow. But uh, the productivity and the quality in the system, where, where we, when you pass this threshold level, when your soil is working properly, when you, the ecosystem services are working well, uh, as I said, all the energy comes from the system. So the, the sustainability of the system relies on high productivity and the quality relies on high productivity. You will have high quality when you have plant with a lot of energy. If you have plant with a lot of energy, it's because you have a high productivity. So you're saying the yield, once you cut across thresholds and once you have a, let's say a healthy functioning system. And you catch is not the solar energy. <laughs> you catch the solar energy. Yield is not a, a limiting factor, let's say. It, 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 it definitely quality is... is it, right, but it's, it's the opposite. Yeah. Sustainability relies on high productivity. Which is interesting because like somehow the framing is always yeah. in the space. Like, ah, okay, because the yield cap and ah, yeah, but this is nice, but how are we going to feed the world? We're not going to get asked that question. No. Um, but how... and and. You basically saying that's nonsense. <laughs> that's the, yes. the summary. Yes, is if you like, you just take a fundamental energetic perspective of this, all the energy comes from the system. So if the system is not with a high productivity, you don't have enough energy to sustain it. And as we said, the plants with high quality, it's either when they are very stressed <laughs> or when they have a lot of energy, well. so when yeah. they are very well. And by the way, when they are very stressed, you will get a lot of enzymatic antioxidants. So that they will help to, to, to remove the very oxidized product uh, and an harmful product. But you need to reload them and you need to reload them with non-enzymatic antioxidant. And this non-enzymatic antioxidant it's it's you you get them when you have a high productivity a high when you catch a lot of energy so so for me a plant with a lot of uh, superoxide dismutase or catalase this antioxidant enzyme it's a plant that is facing a high stress which has still has enough energy to produce this but it's not the At best point, it's not the yeah. best food and to, uh, to 
end with a personal question. How has all this knowledge changed your personal eating? Like what has <laughs> changed in your kitchen and on your plate? Uh, it's of course, the, 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 the first thing is water. <laughs> Uh, not drinking tap water. Explain. I'm not drinking tap water with chloride and uh, aluminium mm -hmm. and, and all these things. It's oxidized water. So, uh, water is very important part of the of the diet. <laughs> it's uh, for a go. It's something like 100 liter per day. So if you you water the go with bad water with oxidized water and uh, it, it will make them sick <laughs> clearly so water is the first thing I'm very careful about and uh, of course I'm I'm it's not necessarily organic food <laughs> uh, for me the, the, yeah, we've seen that with, the, with Pierre the, and, dif and the difference Pierre. between yeah. um, organic and conventional and, and conservation agriculture that um it's not there for me the, the 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 difference is how much energy comes in the system <laughs> so so um i prefer to eat um of course, there will be the, the kind of food you eat. I, I, I eat a lot of vegetables and uh, things. Uh, I don't stop eating meat at all. <laughs> uh, just moderately. Uh, but um, we need pasture land for, for the planet and uh, we need animals. Uh, it's easier to regenerate soil when you have animals, especially the gastric on, on your farm, because they transform the organic matter in a way you won't have in your soil. Uh, they, 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 they sustain uh, microorganisms that are needed and that you won't get on your way. So the, the cattle raising is a very important part for the, for the planet. So we, and, and for the, the food, uh, we, we need some meat. Of course, we need meat that is produced in better condition well, with, yeah. with with for with, yeah, mainly on on pasture and not with, that's also an interesting view some plants they keep everything for them and they are excellent forages some plants they bring a lot to the soil through root exudates and these plants are very good for soil regeneration but they are bad forages so this is something we need to understand also so yeah for my for my Diet. I eat a lot of uh, of vegetable fruits. Not necessarily organic. It's uh, it's more the way they are produced. I'm more on um, dealing with living soil, with the cover crops that have been put in the system, the organic matter that has been brought in the system. That's more important for me. And usually, when you have plant grown on this kind of soil, the, there's not too much pesticide. But <laughs> So, uh, of course, we need to reduce the pesticides. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's the main thing, that the diet is trying to be balanced. It's balanced also. You need diversity in what you eat. I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to, first of all, for the work you do, obviously, and for taking the time today to come here and share about it. It was absolutely fascinating. And I hope uh, I learned a lot, but I hope the, uh, the listeners as well. So thank you so much, Olivier, for coming here. Oh, thanks a lot for inviting me. <laughs> thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. For the show notes and links we discussed in this episode, check out our website, investinginregenerativeagriculture.com forward slash posts. If you like this episode, why not share it with a friend or give us a rating on Apple Podcasts? That really helps. Thanks again and see you next time.